Certainly appreciate everyone uh, tuning in for this uh, Wednesday night lesson. We're currently in the topic of uh, logic, uh, how to ascertain it and how it applies to the Bible. But we're really delving into the uh, mechanics of it first, and we'll get back to the other later. <clears throat> I must say that uh, if... Uh, uh, J.D. will not disclose who gave him this topic. I will not inquire further. So we'll leave it at that. But uh, one thing I do notice about uh, his lesson, and of course all the lessons that have been presented, is that uh, everyone is uh, using logic to present their lessons. They're using what the Bible says and then the uh, implication of what the things are implied so uh you know we're we're doing it already and but we uh, want to get better at it and, and formalize it as to what we're actually doing before we start though let's have a short word of prayer heavenly father we're blessed to be able to hear these lessons we're thankful that we have men who are capable of ascertaining uh the authority for the things that would have us to do and understanding uh, not only the logic of it, but the implication of what is being said. And we're grateful for the attentive listeners and for the great lessons that we learn from their, their word and for the hope that it gives us to, that sustains us in this life and, and uh, has, has us looking forward to the life to come. We're thankful for Jesus who made it all possible. His name uh, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> so I want to share a screen. And I never can remember where I uh, left off. So we'll uh, start here. And it says I'm screen sharing. So. Well, we'll start with uh, we we talked about uh, categorical statements before. A categorical statement is just a statement about a category, some uh, specified uh, topic, if you will. So, category categorical statements uh, are statements that affirm or deny something. And like I say, I may have gone over this last week, but we'll. It doesn't hurt to go back over it again. Every categorical statement can be assigned of one of four forms. And uh, when we get all said and done through syllogisms, you'll find out there are a lot more than that. But the form, uh, forms are as follows. Uh, these are standard forms. Uh, anytime you get into a study of logic, you're going to run across these forms. And we use S and P, but S and P stand for something. So this, the four uh, categorical statement forms are all S or P. Second one is no S or P. And the third one, some S or P. And the fourth one, some S or not P. And when we get down to the square of opposition, we'll uh, the four corners of the square, we'll assign each one of these, one, two, three, and four, to a specified corner of that square of opposition. So the question is, how can a statement be assigned to one of these forms? And we, we'll take a look at this following statement to demonstrate how. It says, nobody shuts the door. And you remember the previous lesson we had talked about the one verb the one verb is the uh, the is you know somebody famously said depends on what the meaning of is is but is we want to get try to get everything into a, an is statement in or one of its cognates um so the verb has changed uh, we previously demonstrated that sentence thus becomes nobody is a door shutter. So it's in the form of, of the verb is a is verb. 
then uh, the sentence can be put in, uh, put in one of the four forms. The, you know, all S or P, no S or P, and some or S or P, and some S or not P. Uh, so no person, we don't want to use no body, but no person is a door shutter. So statements have two parts, a subject and a predicate. You may have come across the uh, definition of these uh, previously, but subject, of course, the one doing the action and the predicate is what is uh, what it's done to or said to uh, or receives the object of the uh, action. But anyway, the subject is uh, usually symbolized by the letter S. You don't have to, but it's just a convenience. And the predicate by the letter P, so S for, sub for a, a subject and P for predicate. In a categorical statement, uh, a relationship is expressed between two classes of objects, the subject class and the predicate class. For example, people on the one hand and door shutters on the other hand. And when we get to the uh, square of opposition, we'll show, uh, we'll lay that out so you can see uh, where it is. So each statement has a quantity and a quality. So the quantity ident identifies where the, whether the statement is universal. And again, when we get the square of opposition, we'll place universal on the square so you can see where it is. It's a uh, statement's universal or, you know, that's either, it's either all or none, all or no, or particular, you know, you're breaking out a piece of it. So a particular piece of it. So you say some or some not. So a statement is universal when it makes a claim about the entire extension of the subject. Remember we talked about extension. You think of a pyramid and when it gets broader, it's being extended. So it's making a claim about the entire uh, extension of the subject. All are something, or no, uh, no one is a door shutter. No person is a door shutter, or all persons are door shutters. All or none. Or if it's a particular, as I said, it's uh, uh, some or some not. So. A statement is particular when it makes a claim about part of the extension of the subject. And the quality identifies whether the statement is a affirmative, all or some. And if you again, if you look in the square of opposition, we'll place the affirmative on one side of the square or negative. And we'll place negative on the other side of the square. So a statement is affirmative when it uh, affirms something of the subject. And it is negative when it denies something of the subject. Uh, these are four combinations of quantity and quality, which gives the four standard categorical statements, which are the statement all S or P, where the quantity is universal because we're seeing all and it's affirmative, again, because well, we're saying all. Second statement is no S or P. That's also universal because we're saying this is not a one, none, zero. So it applies to everybody, none. And negative, none is a negative uh, quality. Now, the statement sum S or P is particular because we're breaking out a piece of the all. We're, we're specifying a particular part of the universal. So it's particular. And saying, saying we, since we're saying some are, that's a, that's a positive statement. And so we're affirming that uh, be so. So that's an affirmative quality. And we get to the statement some S are not P. Uh, again, that's a particular because we're breaking out a piece. And it's negative because it has the, the word not in there. 
and uh, we're letting the clock uh, ding, so we'll just ignore that. I don't know if you can hear it or not. But uh, so the rules for uh, developing a formal argument, we, we want to put statements in one of these standard forms. And the rules for translating categorical statements into standard categorical form, which we want to do, we want to do everything uh, in some sort of standard form so everybody understands what it is. So uh, the statements must begin with the words all, no, or some, or it can be all, none, or, or some. And the verb must be the verb of being. You know, we covered that last time. Is, are, was, were, will be, and so forth. And both the subject and the predicate must be a noun or, or a noun phrase. It shouldn't be a description. It should be a, one, a noun or noun phrase. So we've uh, covered the first two rules. Uh, as illustrative of the third rule in standard categorical form, we do not say all dogs are brown. Instead, we uh, the proper form would be all dogs are brown animals. Brown is a adjective. Uh, it could be a noun, but when it's describing a dog, it's an adjective. And this because of uh, uh, I'd say uh, brown is an adjective. Uh, brown animals uh, gives the expression the noun needs. You know, the the predicate doesn't have to be one word. It could be more than one word, but it has to be uh, uh, identifying a noun. Another example would be uh, some houses are big. Well, uh, a better form would be say to say some houses are big structures. So I think uh, Sonia sent this out for you. You, you should uh, say this to your computer because and all these things I'm going to give you, you'll need to refer to from time to time. But again, when we get to the uh, square of opposition, you'll see these following categories on that square. And one category is contradiction. And uh, let me see if I can just show you a, a square. Uh, let me see if I can show you a square of opposition, what it looks like. And this is what it looks like. And, and we'll come back to this later, but you'll see the corners A, E, I, and O. And you see, you know, where they contradict each other, where they're uh, contraries or subcontraries and super implications and uh, both sides and sub implications. And like I said, I said that one side is affirmative. And this side is uh, universal. This side is negative. I don't know what's on. I don't know, but then down here is particular. So that's that's a uh, uh, square opposition, and we'll get to it later. So the square of opposition uh, presents five different relationships between categorical statements. And we're going to cover these in sequence. Uh, they're contradiction, contrariety, subcontrariety, subimplication, and superimplication. So contradiction is a, the relationship between A and O statements. And don't even be too concerned about A. I know we'll get to that later when we get when we get into detail in the square of opposition. And I and E statements. If you remember that square, you saw the, the diagonal lines. Those are contradictions. 
So the A is upper left hand corner, O is uh, lower right hand, and then uh, I is uh, lower left and E is upper right. But they oppose each other. An A statement would be all S or P. You remember that's universal and uh, affirmative. All S or P. And an O statement would be some S or not P. So it's uh, your contradiction. So there's a diagonal line uh, or I think that's diagonal going down to the uh, lower right. And there's an obvious uh, contradiction between the two statements. The uh, contradiction remains obvious if we substitute actual terms for the abbreviations. All Christians are forgiven sinners. And that's the A statement. Uh, all S or P. Christians are S. Forgiven sinners are P. And then the O statement would be some Christians are not forgiven sinners. And forgiven sinners, uh, that's the, uh, uh, again, a Christians is the uh, subject and not forgiven sinners is the predicate. But these both can't be true. And that's one thing we'll talk about sometime uh, is that A and O, uh, one can be uh, true, the other cannot. If it is true that all Christians are forgiven sinners, it cannot be true that some Christians are, are not forgiven sinners. A contradiction also exists between I and E statements. An I statement, that's the lower left-hand corner. It's affirmative, uh, in, but it's in its particular. Some S or P. And even he statement, uh, which is also a particular statement, but it's negative. No S or P. So it's in the upper right hand corner. I statement is the lower left hand corner, and you draw a line between them. Uh, that's diagonal, and, and they oppose each other. They're contrary to each other. Again, the situation is unchanged if real terms are substituted for S and P. Some Christians are forgiven sinners. Some S or P. And then no Christians are forgiven sinners. No S or P. Uh, this contradiction means that both statements cannot be true. Contradictions, uh, both cannot be true. It's also not possible for both of them to be false. If one statement is true, the other must be false. And if the other statement is true, the first one must be false. So this can be uh, the, illustrated by the example given above. Uh, you know, some Christians are forgiven sinners. If that's true, then no Christians are forgiven sinners. It has to be false. But if no Christians are forgiven sinners is true, and we're just uh, giving that as an example, then it must be false that some Christians are forgiven sinners. So if it's true that some Christians are forgiven sinners, it uh, must be false and uh, that none are and, and vice versa. This also means that contradictory statements do have the uh, relationship of consistency, and we discussed that previously. Consistent statements are statements that uh, both be true. So when we get to the square of opposition, we'll uh, it, it will better be able to grasp it, I think. But contradiction is represented by the diagonal line drawn from one corner to the other. You mean, remember the one going across, making an X? Uh, a line can be drawn from A to 
O and uh, I.E. That's the X form. It represents a contradiction. Contrariety um, is also defining a re relationship. A contrary relationship is that which exists between the universal statements A and E. In this relationship, it is not possible, possible for both statements to be true, but it is possible that both statements are false. For example, uh, here are two contrary statements. And if you uh, have firmly fixed in your mind the square of opposition, the uh, A and E statements are uh, at the top. All astronauts are no astronauts. All astronauts are men. And no astro astronauts are men. A stand for astronauts and M stand for men. Uh, these statements can be abbreviated all A or M and no A or M. It's not possible for both these statements to be true because they're contrary to each other. If all astronauts are men, then it is false that none are. If none are men, then it is that it is false that all are. At the same time, it is possible uh, for both to be false. Now, you you recall that on uh, some space shuttle missions, some astronauts were women and others were men. And so uh, that being the case, these two statements are both false. It's important to distinguish between a uh, contradiction and contrariety. Contradictory statements cannot both be true at the same time, nor can both be false at the same time. With contrariety, both cannot be true simultaneously, but both can be false at the same time. Just look at the uh, previous example. So this uh, relationship of contrariety, if you remember the square of opposition, is represented by the top horizontal line of the square of opposition. When the terms are the same, all A and E statements are contrary. So here's a, another example. All snakes, S, or have snakes represented by S, are green reptiles uh, represented by G. And the contrary statement is no snakes, S, are green reptiles, G. So we can abbreviate this uh, all S are G and no S are G. Although both of these statements may be false and uh, they in fact are, both cannot be true. So let's uh, consider the following uh, to highlight the relationship between two having a discussion on baptism. Jones maintains that in the New Testament, the mode of baptism is by immersion. Smith, however, says that uh, nobody was baptized by immersion. So is this dispute one of contradiction or is it a clash of contrary statements? So if you break it down, we get the following Jones. All the baptisms of the New Testament were by immersion. So all the New Testament baptisms, B, were immersions, I. All B were I. But Smith says uh, nobody in the New Testament was baptized by immersion, or we can put it this way, no New Testament baptisms, B, were immersions, I. So no B or I. And if you place those on the square of opposition, uh, we see that the 
first is an A statement and the second is, is an E statement. This makes the two statements contrary to each other. This means that Jones and Smith cannot both be correct. That the two positions exclude one another. And let me uh, just go back to the, uh, I don't want to go that square yet. A, these are A and E statements. One is all are true, and the other is, I mean, it's all or one thing, and the other one is none or one thing. So they contrary. Both can be false, but both cannot be true. So, again, if you look at the square of opposition, uh, these are contrary. Uh, this means that Jones and Smith cannot both be correct. They can both be wrong, but they can't both be correct because the two positions exclude one another. It's possible to both be wrong, provided that the New Testament taught two different modes of baptism for people today instead of the one baptism taught in Ephesians 4 verse 5. If uh, that were the case, which it isn't, then John, Jones and Smith would both be wrong. Uh, what would be the situation if, uh, what would it be if Smith maintained that some baptisms were not immersions? His statement would then be some be or not, uh, some uh, baptisms are not immersions. That's an O form. Then we would have, would have a, an A form, and that's the upper left-hand corner, related to an O form, and that's the lower right-hand corner. And you remember the uh, X lines, X going across, so these are contradictory. If all B or I, if all baptisms are by, by immersions, if that's true, then some baptisms are not immersions is false. If some B or not I is true, then all B or I is false. You see how that works? Uh, in this case, either Jones or Smith must be correct. Both cannot be wrong. It uh, may seem that there's no difference between the all or no scenario uh, in the all or some not relationship, but this is not the case. In the all or no none scenario, uh, both can be false, but only one can be true. In the all or some not relationship, one of them must be true and the other must be false. So we're talking about the contrary statements. Uh, so what is a subcontrarity? And let me uh, kind of move my uh, look at the new square again. Uh, uh, Here's the uh, subcontrarity. You got the contrarity up here and the subcontrarity down here at the bottom. You see I and O. See that? So uh, like I say, it's not possible possible for both an I and O statement to be false. So the relationship of subcontrarity is the opposite of contrarity as seen by comparing them side by side. Contrarity, both statements cannot be true, but they both can be false. In a subcontrarity, both statements can be true, but both cannot be false. 
For example, here are an I and O statement respectfully. Some preachers are boring speakers. I don't know uh, where this example came from. <clears throat> Pure speculation, I'm sure. Some preachers are not boring speakers. Is it uh, possible for the above two statements to be true? <clears throat> yes, because you know you're just talking about a, a part of the uh, universe, a particular. <clears throat> it's possible uh, for some to be boring, and at the same time for the other part not to be boring. Is it possible for both statements to be false? Uh, no, it's it's not possible. If it is false that some preachers are boring that's the same as saying that no preachers are boring and if no preachers are boring then certainly some preachers are not boring because all preachers are not boring another example would be uh, some students are intelligent and then some students are not intelligent. Again, these are particulars, one's in the affirmative, one's in the negative. It's not difficult to see that uh, both of these statements can be true. It may be more difficult to understand why both cannot be false. And it may help to draw the statements on the square of opposition and follow through this argument step by step. So one, if it is false that some students are not intelligent, that is the same as saying that all students are intelligent by contradiction. And if all students are intelligent, then it must be true that some students are intelligent. Uh, that's just by implication. And if it is true that some students are intelligent, then it cannot be false that some are in fact intelligent, you know, you're using the law of thoughts. Thus, they uh, cannot both be false. And what about sub implication? Again, go back to the uh, uh, square of opposition. You got super implication over here, or uh, yeah, sub implication. We're talking about sub implication here, here. So, sub implication between A and I and E and O, whereas uh, sub uh, contrarieties between I and O. So let's look at sub contrariety. Uh, well, not sub contrariety, sub implication. Let's look at sub implication. In the relationship of sub implication, uh, the truth of a particular statement can be inferred from the truth of the universal for the same quality. We'll talk about that uh, more in detail later. Given the truth of a universal statement A, the truth of the corresponding particular statement, you know, remember particulars on the bottom, uh, universal statements at the top, A's at the top, I's at the bottom, so given the truth of a universal A statement, the truth of the corresponding particular statement, in this case, it's an I statement, is implied. The same can be said of the other universal particular statements, which is E to O, which no, uh, none, and then some are not. So if an A statement is true, then the corresponding I statement must be true. If all are, then some must also be. If an E statement is true, none, 
in its corresponding O statement, some are not, must be true. Uh, here's an example of a sub-implication. A statement, all Christians are God's children. The I statement is some Christians are God's children. And we're not trying to prove uh, uh, these statements to be true or false. We're just using this as an example. So if it is true that all Christians are God's children, then it must be true that some of them are. It cannot be false that some Christians are God's children, or cannot be false that some Christians are God's children if all of them are. Here's an example of a sub-implication between, uh, between an E and O statement. E statement, uh, no logicians, that's everyone, uh, universal, no logicians or poets. And you get down to the negative uh, particular, some logicians are not poets. If it is true that no logicians are poets, then it must be true that some are not poets. If statement E is true, it is not possible that statement O is false. So if statement E is true, then statement O must also be true. On the square of opposition, the relationship of sub-indication can be pictured with two arrows on either side of the square going from top to bottom. The relationship of sub-indication has nothing to do with falsity. It is concerned solely with the implication of truth. The truth of a particular statements is inferred from the truth of the corresponding universal statement. Let's look at the new, new square again. <clears throat> See there, uh, going up and down. on both sides. So, <clears throat> and again, if you look at that new square, there's the super implication on both sides. There goes the, the option direction. The implication uh, I is inferred from A and and uh, the uh, sub implication of O is inferred from E. But you get the super implication. It's the, uh, the implication of the truth of one statement on the basis of the truth of another statement. So in co contract to uh, this super implication is the implication of falsity. Uh, with sub implication, the inference is from a universal statement to a particular statement of the same quality, A to, to I, E to O. And again, look at the square. A to I, that's the sub implication, and E to O, that's the sub implication. So this is saying something about. I and O from the universal. Super is the option direction. It's something being said about the universal from the particular or in the option direction. Uh, with sub implication, the, uh, like I said, the, the inference is from a universal to a particular. And this relationship was uh, pictured by those vertical arrows, you recall that, going from the top to the bottom. And the relationship of a super implication, and, and, and just must say that the, uh, the sub just mean going down, super going up, you know, submarines go down, and uh, superior is always above. 
in superimcation, given the uh, falsity, falsity of a particular statement, the falsity of its corresponding universal is implied. The falsity of an A statement can be inferred from the falsity of an I statement. Likewise, the falsity of an E statement can be inferred from the falsity of an O statement. And let's look at the square. Um, you can infer, if this is false, you can infer that A is false by superimcation. If O is false, then you can infer that E is false by superimplication. So let's look at uh, uh, some examples here. I statement. Some Christians are atheists. That's a particular positive or affirmative statement. And uh, A statement, all Christians are atheists. That's a universal affirmative statement. Remember, superimplication is going from the uh, uh, bottom statement, if you will, to the top statement. So if it is false that some Christians are atheists, then it must be false that all of them are. Because uh, when you say some are atheists, some are not. Understanding the relationship between O and E statements is perhaps a little more difficult. An O statement, some dogs are not mammals. And in these statements, no dogs are mammals. If it is false that some dogs are not mammals, then it must be true that all of them are mammals by contradiction. And if all dogs are mammals, then it must be false that some are mammals by uh, contrariety. So between A and I statements and E and O statements, uh, we can distinguish two relationships, double implication and super implication. With the relationships previously studied, the error between the letters should be understood as a two-way street, A to O and O to A and, and E to I and I to E. They have the same relationship, that is contradiction. But with either sub-implication or super-implication, the error goes only one way. So uh, be sure to archive these uh, uh, slides and the uh, square of opposition. And we're going to get another square of opposition that's going to be a, it's saying the same thing, but it's going to be a little more complicated. So, But we're over time now, so we'll have to pick up uh, here next time. Thank you.